are willing to offer them. I get that. What one of the impetuses for doing this episode was a discussion I had with several colleagues about Santa Claus um, and and the lie we tell our children involving Santa Claus, so to speak. What I'm getting from you is it's a good lie. If if the kids are really into it and they they enjoy it, we're good. I mean, I think I think what's so interesting in this sort of this like broader puzzle is is how we tell our kids never lie. You know, always tell me the truth. Don't lie to me. Honesty is always the right thing to do. And then we turn around and engage in deception and even model it, but then exhort them to, you know, tell grandma you love the sweater <laughs> and, you know, you know, don't, don't tell grandma she looks terrible. You can't say that. Um, we <laughs> were, we're modeling and endorsing deception. And I think, yeah, lying about Santa Claus is, is this fabrication that could yield really great benefits for, for people. But I'll also chime in and mention, right, that, that part of what our research suggests is right, there are these two forms of trust, and there's also kind of this short-term consequence and long-term consequence. So, yes, I might love the, the revelry, the fantasy of Santa Claus. I might love your polite compliments. I might choose to be friends with you. I trust you to take care of me. That's all established in our work. But, but we also find that uh, even these pro-social lies that do have these short uh, affiliative trust benefits do reduce trust in someone's words in the long run. And so it is important to be aware of that dynamic um, because, yeah, children might actually love Santa Claus, but then when they're told something later in life about uh, another myth, uh, they might right, doubt their parents' words. And we see that right in close relationships, in feedback, in a lot of settings. And so there are these dual benefits and costs uh, to even these pro-social lies. 